Hi, my name is Minta Kim. Let's start my lecture on gravity. In this lecture, I'd like to talk about the origin of gravity. Uh, gravity is not a fundamental force, but a phenomenon used by the more fundamental laws of motion. For more information, please refer to my book entitled Origin of Gravity and New Cosmos at the Amazon Bookstore. Gravity is a very familiar force of nature, but its origin is still unknown. Lecture 1 is prepared based on the content of chapter 2 of this book, Origin of Gravity. It says, Vacuum is filled with a very hard medium through which light travels. Mass is the vibration energy stored in a solid vacuum, and this vibration creates a phenomenon called gravity through matter wave. You know where Newton discovered gravity? Newton was a British scientist who worked it from the late 1600 to the early 1700. Newton's theory was published in his book in 1687, as shown here. The book is written in Latin and the, t the title is Mathematical Principles of Nature Philosophy. There are four fundamental forces in nature, the strong force, electromagnetic force, weak force, and gravity. Gravity is the weakest and only attractive force on these four forces. It is proportional to the product of the masses of two objects and inversely proportional to the scale of the distance between the centers of the two objects. When Newton had published his theory of gravity, there were much debates. Bentley in particular criticized the theory. Bentley was a classical scholar, critic, and a theologian. Bentley stated, If the universe is finite in size, then since gravity is always attractive, all stars and galaxies should collapse into each other. If the size of the universe is infinite, then all stars and galaxies should be torn apart by the force of gravity. This is Bentley's paradox. Newton was, would have been very embarrassed. Newton wrote in his letter to Bentley in, 19, in 1692, it is inconceivable that inanimate brute matter should, without the meditation of something else, which is not material, operate upon and affect other matter without mutual contact. He was very confused about the nature of the vacuum. So is the vacuum really the space of nothing? Modern physics says there is energy in the vacuum. The magnitude of vacuum energy is provided by two, two theories. The standard model of cosmology based on general relativity predicts its magnitudes as 10 to the power of minus 9 joule per cubic meter. On the other hand, quantum mechanics predicts its value as 10 to the power of 113 joule per cubic meter. Converted to mass, it is 10 to the power of 91 kilogram per cubic centimeter. It is very large compared to the power of 53 kilogram of the mass of the universe. There is huge difference between the two predictions. This is why it is called the vacuum catastrophe, also known as the Cosmological constant problem. See this article for more details. It is now recognized that the vacuum is not an empty space. Dark matter, dark energy are mentioned in the standard model of cosmology. By the way, there are several constants regarding to the vacuum, known for a long time. You know well the gravitational constant you also have from electromagnetism, the vacuum permittivity, 
the vacuum permeability, the impedance of the vacuum, if the, if the vacuum is really empty and all of these values are zero, the universe cannot exist. There is huge difference in the vacuum energy between the two predictions as mentioned. We can, how can we solve this paradox? If the vacuum is made of very hard medium, like the prediction of quantum mechanics, but contains a very small amount of energy, like the predictions of general relativity, the paradox will go away. In other words, the vacuum is solid medium and platform for energy and matter. This is our paradigm of the vacuum. This vacuum is illustrated in the picture of Goho. Starry night on the Rhone River in 1888, stars shine in the solid sky like on an LED screen. I think Goho knew the secret of the vacuum. You know that light is a sheer wave and it propagates in the vacuum at the speed of light. If the vacuum is solid, there is there will be a similarity of the propagation of the light and that of sound waves in solids. Sound waves are divided into pressure waves and shear waves. The speed of a shear wave in a solid is shown here. It is proportional to the scale root of the shear modulus divided by the mass density. When we remove the volume, volume term in this equation, we have e equal mc s square. It is very familiar to us. It has the same form as Einstein's mass energy equivalence from this equation. We can have a formula for the speed of light in the solid vacuum. So, mass energy equivalence is nothing but the propagation of light in the solid vacuum. Substituting the density value of the solid vacuum from the quantum mechanics into, the, into this equation gives the shear modulus of the solid vacuum. 10 to the power of 100 gigapascal, a very huge value compared to the value of diamond around 450 gigapascal. Gravity is not a fundamental force. It is just a phenomenon arising from the interaction of matter with the solid vacuum. So we can seek its origin in terms of solid mechanics. General relativity has something common with our vacuum paradigm. So let's briefly learn about this. It is expressed in mathematical form. They are called Einstein's field equations. As you can see, it's hard to understand. We see some unfamiliar terms, rich curvature tensor, Minkowski space. This equation means that if there is a mass like Earth, the space-time around it will be distorted. The theory is published in, in a German journal in 1915. Here are many Einsteins. Who is the closest person to the year he published his theory of relativity? Einstein presented his work on general relativity here in the Zichung, the physicalish mathematician class on 25th November 1915. This is the first page of the paper entitled The Felt Gleichung and the Gravitation. It was published when he was 37 years old. Here the photos of Einstein are arranged by year. The closest one to the year of 1915 is this one taken in 20, uh, 1921. It is an official photo after he was awarded Nobel Prize in Physics. This photo was taken when he was 3 years old in middle and high school. Einstein in this photo was in his mid-twenties when he worked for the Swiss patent office. Just one year before publishing 
special relativity in 1905. In 1935, he was at Princeton University. Do you know who this is? An actor named Christoph Lloyd, the doctor who invented the time motion in the film Back to the Future. It is similar to this photo, isn't it? We can say general relativity is currently the greatest theory of cosmology. The standard model, the lambda CDM model, is based on general relativity. But there are four things that are missing in general relativity. The most basic premise of the theory is that inertial mass and gravitational mass are equal. These two masses are completely different in concept and we don't know why they are the same. Secondly, why does space-time bend when there is a mass? Third, why do we have gravity when space-time bends? Lastly, the most fundamental thing, what is mass? General relativity doesn't answer any of these questions. Let's start. Why does space-time destroy the round mass? It's very simple. When a mass-bearing object is inserted in a solid vacuum, it deformed and destroyed the surrounding solid vacuum. In response to this, the pressure inside the object increases exponentially as it gets close to the center due to stress exerted by the surrounding solid vacuum. Stars continuously or explosively release energy produced by the hydrogen fusion reaction at the central region of very high pressures. Just before exploding into a supernova, the star has an onion structure consisting of heavy elements in the center and the light element on the outside. Experimentally, inertial mass and gravitational mass are always the same. There is absolutely no difference. The concepts are completely different. The resistance to acceleration by external forces is inertial mass. This the force divided by the acceleration. Gravitational mass, on the other hand, is defined as the gravitational strength between two bodies, weight divided by the gravitational acceleration. This difference has long been a concern, including Galileo. A Hungarian physicist at Vez firstly developed a sophisticated experimental device. If we put different weights on both ends of the road and hang in a string on the center of gravity, it will not move. We shake the pen pendulum horizontally, we feel different forces be because of different masses. But if the ratio of forces and the weights are different, we will rotate and the duration can be measured with this mirror. In fact, there is no difference between the two masses, so this experiment requires tremendous patience. In 1906, Pekka and Fekete measured for more than 400 hours and reported the difference in 1909 as less than 10 to the power of minus 8. Currently, it is estimated to be less than 10 to the power of minus 13 to minus 18. In the experiments, the two masses are already the same. But the question why they are the same has not been answered. We believe to know this equivalence is to know the origin of gravity. Let's first think of inertia. Newton, the first law of motion is the law of inertia. The center of mass of an object moves at a constant speed unless external forces are applied. Why? 
and where and how is kinetic energy stored when an object moves. If the vacuum is made of a hard medium, it will be compressed in the forward direction and relaxed in the opposite direction when an object moves at a constant speed. It is the Doppler, Doppler effect. The wavelength of light becomes shorter in the forward direction and lower in the opposite direction. An inertial movement destroys the solid vacuum. The object moves in the direction of more distorted solid vacuum. Kinetic energy is defined as the distortion energy of the solid vacuum. How do we obtain the kinetic energy stored in the solid vacuum? This can be obtained from the difference between the relativistic mass m and the rest to mass m0. In this occasion, gamma is the Lorentz factor and is given by this formula. When we expand this equation into table series, we have this infinite sum of items. Since the speed of an object is usually very small compared to the speed of light, only the first term is valid. In conclusion, the object moves in the direction to which there is a difference in the solid vacuum distortion. The movement stores energy in the solid vacuum, in which, which in turn sustains the movement. This is the law of inertia. An inertial motion is the linear motion of an object in the direction of the more severe distortion of a solid vacuum. What if the object rotates? Distortion will develop in a two-dimensional symmetric manner. When you see solar system planets, they are all revolved around the sun's rotational plane. It should be related to the distortion of the solid vacuum formed by the solar rotation. If you see the cross section of our galaxy, it is very flat. It suggests a powerful rotation in the center. If we look it from the top, we can see this is it is rotating. The Andromeda galaxy is similar in shape to the two-dimensional developed distortion of the solid vacuum. This is a pinwheel galaxy that looks like a rotating pinwheel. An inertial motion is the linear motion of an object in the direction of encouraging distortion of the solid vacuum. What if the object rotates? The rotation causes distortion, distortion of the solid vacuum in a two-dimensional point symmetric manner. What if an object vibrates randomly at a point? The solid vacuum will be distorted in a three-dimensional point symmetric manner. The intensity will of course decrease as we move away from the center of the vibration. We can say the distortion of the space-time in general relativity is due to the three-dimensional vibration of the, the oscillators called mass. This vibration should emit matter wave. In quantum mechanics, matter wave is well defined in terms of mass. The frequency of matter wave is nothing but mass and energy. As an object moves, the Lorentz factor increases, resulting in a higher frequency and thus a higher mass. When we are asked what is mass, we can say mass is the vibration energy of the solid vacuum. It is definition of mass in our vacuum paradigm. Matter wave was originated from the de Broglie hypothesis. De Broglie was a French physicist. In his doctoral thesis in 1924, 
he proposed a hypothesis that matter, including electrons, can have the wave characteristic as light has the dual characteristics of wave and particle. In 1927, two researchers at the Bell Lab, Davison and Jama, found in their experiment when an electron beam was radiated onto a nuclear target, inference pattern of electrons by nuclear crystal were found, were detected. The De Broglie hypothesis was proved and the matter way became the key to quantum physics. In 1929, he won the Nobel Prize in Physics. Meanwhile, German physicist Schrödinger thought that the De Broglie hypothesis could explain the behavior of matter as a wave, and published this wave equation in 1926. This equation became the basic equation of quantum mechanics, and Schrödinger won the Nobel Prize in 1933. Let's summarize. Here is an object in space. This object is randomly vibrating, yielding a rust mass. So the distortion of solid vacuum is symmetric. It doesn't move. If there is another object, the symmetry will be broken. Point P and point Q are the same distance from the center of this object. But because of this object, the distortion of solid vacuum at P will be greater than at Q. So this object will move toward P due to the law of inertia. The close to this object, the greater difference in distortion, the first it will move. It will be accelerated. This is the origin of gravity. Gravity is a phenomenon which occurs as a result of inertial motion in the direction of severe distortion of the solid vacuum. Namely, gra gravity is just a special case of inertial movement. Therefore, inertial mass and gravitational mass must be the same. Gravity is not a fundamental force, but a phenomenon induced by the more fundamental laws of motion, laws of mo inertia and the metal wave. In this lecture, we introduce the new concept of the vacuum and the origin of gravity. In lecture 2, we are going to give validation on our hypothesis. We are going to do two things, the deflection of light in a gravitational field and the precession, precession of mercury. We will compare them with those of Einstein's general relativity. Thank you for your attention. My book, Origin of Gravity and New Cosmos, is waiting for you. It tells you more interesting stories. See you in lecture 2.